Welcome to section 18 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing Nocardia asteroides, which you can see right here. This scene takes place in an urban environment with these two terrorists making note card bioweapons. Note card sounds like Nocardia, so it will be our symbol for Nocardia. Notice that we've intentionally made all of the buildings purple. This is to remind you that Nocardia is a gram-positive organism. Technically, it's weakly gram-positive, and it also weakly stains acid fast, which we'll talk about in a second. An agency has fortunately gotten word about these mischievous terrorists, and now a helicopter has come to the scene to put an end to this nonsense. Notice that some tangled up cords have been dropped from the helicopter. The tangled up cords are a symbol for the branching filamentous morphology of Nocardia, because the tangled up cords look similar to the organism when viewed under a microscope. This is a gram stain of a branching filamentous organism. Notice that the organism forms long filamentous strands that branch into various directions. You can see that right here. Next, notice that we've shown a bunch of dirt in the road next to the sidewalk. This is here to help you remember that Nocardia is endemic in soil. One of the soldiers who dropped down into this drug bust from the helicopter is now standing up against the door getting ready to go in. However, as you can probably tell, he seems pretty nervous about this situation, probably because this is his first rodeo. In order to calm his nerves, he has an inhaler. Just like in other videos, this is used to represent that Nocardia is an obligate aerobic organism. So inhaler for obligate aerobe. The frightened soldier also has a comrade in the helicopter who's using a loud microphone to tell the terrorists to come out. Microphone sounds kind of like mycolic, so it will be used to represent that Nocardia has mycolic acid in its cell wall. Now we've added another soldier who's pouring acid onto the door. The acid is very rapidly melting away the door, which will allow the soldiers to break into the terrorist's room. We've included this in the scene to help you remember that Nocardia is weakly acid fast. So acid melting the door rapidly for acid fast. Now notice that we've added a car to the scene which is in flames because of a bomb that went off inside the car. Car bomb sounds like carbol fusion, so in this image, it will represent carbol fusion. Carbol fusion is a red staining reagent that's used as one of the steps in the acid fast stain. So car bomb for carbol fusion. Let's look at an image of the acid fast stain so you can see what I'm talking about. This is an acid fast stain of Mycobacterium tuberculosis, not Nocardia. However, Nocardia would stain similarly, and this is a great image to see what the stain looks like generally. Notice that the organism appears bright red after staining and that there is a blue background. So red organism right here, blue background. This is because in the acid fast stain, a sample of the organism is stained red with carbol fusion. Alcohol is added followed by a methylene blue counter stain. The high mycolic acid concentration in the cell wall of acid fast organisms retains the red staining of carbol fusion, so when the alcohol is added, the red stain doesn't wash off. Therefore, acid fast organisms hold fast to their red stain and appear red under the microscope with a methylene blue counter stain background. Okay, moving on, notice that we've added a big yellow oil puddle spewing out from the car. This looks kind of like a puddle of urine and is here to help you remember that Nocardia is a urease positive organism. We covered this test in the last two videos, but recall that the pink color in the test tube right here indicates that the organism is urease positive. The cat has mistaken the oil for water and is attempting to drink from the mess. Just like in our other videos, the cat here is to remind you that Nocardia is a catalase positive organism. This is a picture demonstrating the catalase test, which we covered in more detail in section seven, which was our video on listeria. And recall that the bubbles right here indicate that the organism is catalase positive. Unfortunately, one of the soldiers was injured in the car bomb explosion, so some of his comrades are rescuing him on the stretcher. The stretcher is our symbol for immunocompromised because people who need a stretcher obviously aren't 100% healthy. This part of the image is to help you remember that Nocardia infections predominantly occur in immunocompromised individuals. To make matters worse, a civilian was injured in the attack. Now his skin is on fire and he's running for help. The burned skin should help you remember that cutaneous involvement may be seen, especially in immunocompetent individuals. As the smoke from the car rises into the air, you can see that one of the sniper soldiers begins to cough. Who wouldn't cough after a big explosion like this? I know I would. Anyways, the cough here is to help you remember that Nocardia causes pneumonia. Some of the car parts were blown into the air and landed clear up here at the top of the building. These burning red car parts resemble little inflamed bumps, kind of like abscesses. The fact that they're on top of the building should help you remember that the abscesses occur in the head, or at the top of the body. More specifically, nocardia can spread to the CNS, resulting in brain abscesses. Finally, notice that we've added a bunch of meth crystals on the table that the terrorists are using in their bioweapons. Just like in our Staph saprophyticus video, the meth crystals represent TMP-SMX, which is the treatment for Nocardia. 
Okay, let's do a question. A 33-year-old homeless male is brought to the emergency department due to a severe headache and altered mental status. He has a history of HIV and has not been compliant with his medications. The patient also has had a fever, night sweats, and a productive cough for the past several weeks. Physical examination reveals bilateral papilledema and crackles heard throughout all lung fields. An MRI of the brain reveals an abscess. Which of the following is true regarding the most likely causal organism? A. It is a gram-positive caucus. B. It is a gram-negative rod. C, it is catalase positive, or D, it is an obligate anaerobe. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient is immunocompromised because he has a past medical history of HIV and has not been compliant with his medications. This, along with fever, night sweats, and a brain abscess confirmed with MRI are highly suggestive of nocardia. So the correct answer is C, it is catalase positive. A is describing Staph aureus. This is definitely a more common cause of brain abscesses than nocardia, but the history of fever, night sweats, and pulmonary involvement make this diagnosis less likely. B is also incorrect, because this is less likely. There are many gram-negative rods, but many of them cause gastrointestinal infections, and again, the history of fever, night sweats, and pulmonary involvement make this diagnosis less likely. D is not true. Nocardia is an obligate aerobe. So again, C is the correct answer. From the image, recall that the cat is drinking from the oil spill, which should help you remember that nocardia is a catalase-positive organism.